Well, welcome back to part two of fault finding and using multimeter. So this is about a five, six, seven year old boiler now that um, I've got a display in the workshop just to show you all. The top got an air pressure switch. Oops, sorry. Got the micro switch on side. I went through on part one how to use that. Set your multimeter to the speakers, continuity, normally closed, normally open. Connecting from COM, which is live in. You got the tubes going from the fan. So to test this, blow down it. It should work. We have a fan here as well. Take the spades off. Always be careful though when you take the spades off, you don't yank them off here. And you can check the home's resistance there. In part one, I mentioned if you have no hot water, the issue could be the diverter valve, and I mentioned the micro switch and the shaft moving up and down, and the, the rubber diaphragm, how that could be worn and split, not moving up. On this boiler, we have a three way valve, an actuator. And when it gets the message that you need hot water, it opens up. Here is a three way actuator. And it opens up and so. So you can check if your water is working by turning the, the tap on and seeing if this moves up and down. If it's not moving, you need to check the wiring. Follow the link back to the PCB and check if it's getting the call back. If it is moving, you know there's a problem somewhere else further up the sequence. And there you have the shaft that moves up and down. And that has actually seized rock hard. Here we have a flow switch. So for a boiler to sense the activation of the hot water flowing, there's various techniques. Modern boilers have a, like a uh, turbine like an impeller, and the faster that impeller goes, the more voltage or the larger message he sends uh, to the PCB. This has got a flow switch. Others have the brass valve, diver valve that I mentioned in part one. So that's a flow switch. They get filthy, you can always clean them. Here we have a thermistor. So I mentioned this thermistor in part one. The multimeter set it to 20k, put it on the horseshoe setting on the left, on both probes. When that help line up, say right, what should it be? When cold, what should it be when hot? Now rest that just there. Just here we have a high limit stat. So again for this, you'll check up um, continuity the speaker setting on the multimeter. You can always put a bit of graphite grease on there just to cool it down in case it gets too hot. Only a small amount though. So a lot of modern boilers, if they're fan assisted, they're more than likely got um, a fan so they're going to have a, an air pressure switch. This is one here. So I'm going to do a little wiring diagram for you now. So you have COM, which is live. NC and O. The so live will go straight through. Now that stands for normally closed. Okay? So when the boiler's off and the fan's not running, you'll see live there. 
when the fan is running the life supply will switch to the normally open if your boiler is doing absolutely nothing then the pressure switch which is that component there will be seized in the closed position so here's an air pressure switch you can see the three spade connections there in this scenario it's labelled one, two and three and we have the tubes so the tubes always check that they're free because some of them do have little nipples inside that you can free open or filters so you're so working on the air pressure switch I've connected a temporary piece of hose so this hose would actually link on to the fan and the fan would blow a force down and it would switch from normally closed to normally open so to confirm it's going to normally open I'm going to set the multimeter on the speaker the continuity on there so this should be make a noise now it's not the micro switch should be closed in the NO position off so now I'm going to blow in this tube just to simulate the air pressure switch and I should get continuity across the COM to the normally open So discussing electrodes, here we have a few old type. So when these get old, they warp. This one has warped, so the gap will have changed the manufacturing instructions. So this will probably not work. There's a little crack in the ceramic and the cable is torn. So this cable that's torn here, it'll be losing rectification through it and perhaps heat as well. On this one, the gasket was damaged, so it was shorting across, the spot wasn't getting through. So remember, this is where we go through the process of converting AC to DC using microvolts. This is water as well. The gap is different to manufacturing instructions, and the metal has had a material breakdown as well. So this is another faulty one. Now you can check these. These don't always have to look faulty or worn to cause an overhaul problem. So what you do is you go to your multimeter, you set it on this setting below. Get your neutral back to the other side of the lead and you connect this to a spade joint and you should get six to 11 microvolts. Some appliances, you go to the dashboard and it will tell you. PCBs, obviously if you have a boiler that's not responding at all, it could be a jammed air pressure switch, a high limit stat, low pressure, it could be a reset button, also it could be the PCB. So always look at the PCB, visually inspect it, check for burns, here we've got a few burn marks, check for solder dried dot also check the internal fuse just here we have an internal fuse so what I can do is I can remove this fuse use a double insulated tools electrical screwdriver so the symbol for double insulated is two squares always take the fuse out by the metal section so you don't damage it take it out Multimeter on the speaker setting, continuity, 
one or both ends and, it, and this fuse is actually fine you have to appreciate with these PCBs they can either have a 1 amp or 2 amp fuse in and you have to put the correct fuse inside whether it's a slow burn or a fast burn and that's the actual fuse wire some are quite like um, wires and some are like blades also as well if you contact the manufacturers they'll tell you where you should have a power supply at each exit so for example here we have some electrical connections here to go to the appliance and these are usually labelled as well this is X3 etc how to check earth continuity this is something you might be asked to do on an interview and it should be 0 0.01 so one probe on the earth, one on for example the earth, earth casing, zero, because in this case it doesn't have far to travel. Should a gas valve go wrong, this one is a double solenoid, so discuss it with the manufacturer and always look at where they recommend. Here we have the earth, EV1, EV2 and COM. So you put your multimeter probe on the con, one on EV, so the resistance reading for this is about 870, for gas valve 2 which is EV2 is roughly the same, so the resistance for both Solenoids is pretty similar. If you're wiring heating systems up or you work in many appliances and you see COM or call, COM is usually the live into the appliance or the component, and call is usually the live going back out. So if it's a room thermostat, it'll say COM, the live going in, and the call will be the message back to the boiler saying fire up. This is an automatic air vent. This is fitted on most sealed systems and combination boilers at the top just above the heat exchanger and these usually leak. They are under quite a lot of pressure and they do function quite regularly. They usually leak when they are first operated and they should seal. You do get several options with these whether you can um, leave them open to work automatically or shut them completely. This is a where you can shut it automatically and open it. So always check that these aren't dripping when you service an appliance. They are quite simple. What you can do is if you don't have one at hand, just unscrew it and lubricate it. That's all it is inside, is a little float. Give it a wash, put some Vaseline or lubrication around the side, insert it back in. Thermostat ready a valve. If your heating doesn't work, put a bit of WD-40 around that and give it a tap. And that should seize it for it to function again. Never put pliers on and lift it up. If you hit down softly, it will put the pin back on the washer and it will even overhaul it even better. Always check as well, it's not making any noises. This is a reverse flow. So it can be fitted either way, that way, or that way. This side we've got a gas cock, these are fitted on gas hobs. It's, it is law that these gas hobs have isolation valves. This type of gas cock were notorious for leaking at the back. Just give it a nip up and seal it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little clip. Subscribe, get watching my videos, take notes, um, re watching, get yourself confident, ask me questions, there's gonna be loads more on fault finding.